Okay, so let's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate talking about this. <laughs> Well done, good. <laughs> Just like that, that's fantastic. Yeah. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Mary Ann, and this is my husband Andrew. <laughs> and we're adopters. <laughs> Two years ago, we adopted a little boy and a little girl. It has been the best thing we've ever done. Absolutely. Really. Um, they are fantastic and annoying <laughs> and loud and... Very loud. Um, just wonderful. <sighs> How does it make me feel? It makes me feel complete. Felt as if I was sort of lost and I needed something and that something was children. And <laughs> when we came to it, they asked us, and how many would you like? And I said, oh, it's got to be two. And Andrew went, are you sure? I said, yes. I'm adopting with my partner, Paul, uh, and we're fairly new into the process. We've just done parenting classes, uh, but the key thing for me was meeting other adopters and foster carers. Um, and actually, at the end of the course, actually seeing some cards of real-life children that needed adoption, because that kind of brought it all together, really. We would never at the beginning have, have looked at our little boy no, we wouldn't. because he had issues and problems yeah. and I, I'm so glad that we looked be, beyond that because yeah. he's been a blessing. He has, yeah. When we met them on the first day we walked into the living room and her giggles and looked around and behind the sofa these two little girls hiding behind the sofa in hysterics and they wanted to see us before we saw them and, uh, you know, that, at that point, they started calling us mummy and daddy. I had to go and blow my nose, because it was just so much to take in, that these two precious little things were just wonderful. When he first came to us, he didn't really have any strong emotions. He just used to put his arms on you rather than hug you. But now he really hugs you tight till he shakes and that's really fantastic and it makes you feel really good. It's been the best thing we've ever done. Absolutely. Wouldn't change it, wouldn't swap it and would nope. certainly wouldn't go back to being no. without them. Can't imagine my life <laughs> without them. <laughs> Don't know what I'd do. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you got it somewhere. Yeah. Okay, my name's David. My name's Seafar. We've been fostering for around 12 years and uh, we foster because we really want to make a difference in young people's lives. When you see a little child who's come from, you know, where he's unhappy and you've put positives in that child's life and they return home or they go off somewhere else, it just makes your job worthwhile doing. We get so much support, we get so much help. We get as much help and support as we want. So it's not actually rammed down our throats. Um, but we only have to pick up a phone if we have a problem. Our sons and our daughters interact with the kids. It does make a difference in their lives too. It shows them that sort of there is needy children out there and it sort of helped them to sort of learn mm. compassion and support and understanding. But for us, uh, the, the reason we do fostering is because there are A, there's a need, and B, because we get a lot out of it ourselves, knowing that we have sort of um, really transformed or seen a life transformed and sort of saved from, you know, probably a life of crime and all, you know, all the sort of issues that some, some of the kids that we have interacted over the years. I think fostering is a brilliant thing to do. I think we've been very lucky. We've met some fabulous people and some wonderful children and families. And I, I would recommend it to most, almost anybody. I was fostered um, from the age of 12. It was a great part of my life. I wouldn't change it. It's made, it's given me the chance and given me the opportunities of who I am. I'm, and I'm, I'm very lucky. I've got two families now rather than just one. So I really, it's a really positive time to me. And I hope that other people can see this and they can gain the positive experiences that I had. I'm Claire. I'm a short break foster carer. I'm Beth. Who are you? I'm the daughter of the foster carer. <laughs> Um, I offer short breaks for children with disabilities um, and I'm able to give the, um, the parents a break and the children somewhere fun to come to. These are usually youngsters with profound difficulties 
and they come for very short periods of time, overnight stays with us. And sometimes we have them for a week at a time, so the parents and all the other siblings can go and have a holiday that they otherwise wouldn't normally have. Often it's over for goodness sake, all I need is a break, please take my child mm. away. So then they realise after a couple of nights, actually I do love this child really very much and I want this child back. So because we take the child back and there's usually a rested parent. I have a daughter, Charlie, who's 16, um, and she never really slept away from home until she was about 11. And then she started going to short break foster care with um, a couple called Denise and Ray. I, I, I rebuked it for so long and I was, no, I can manage, I can manage, I can manage, but you can only manage for so long. Just because it's so, de it's demanding, you know. In a perfect world, she would be able to spend more and more time with Denise. We know she can do two nights and she's not upset or anything. So to maybe do three or four nights until eventually she doesn't even need me anymore. And when I'm gone, it won't have a massive impact on her. But the resources aren't there. That's the, that's, that's the bottom line. There isn't enough people like Denise and Denise is in demand so much that there isn't the availability that we need to do that. So I don't know where we go from there. I don't know how we make that jump from a couple of days to three or four days. Everybody gains from short break disability. The, the siblings are just thankful for having the opportunity to have time with mum and dad. Um, you can see it in the children that come to me. You can see that they enjoy coming. It's a win-win situation. It really is. I think it's the best job I've ever done. Mm. Yes. Um, and you do it at home. And a man to the boss. <laughs> Which, you know, it's not bad, You're not in it? the rat race. That's a big, a big... No, you're not in the rat race. You're certainly not in the rat race. And it gives you a different perspective on life. It's tiring. It is exhausting. Mm. Mm. But it's, it's not great easy. Fun. It's not, not easy. easy. <laughs> but, yes, people can do it. People do do it. And people do get a great deal from it. And they do make a difference. That sounds very cliched, I know, but they do make a difference. It's just that feeling that there's this child who has such a lot of difficulties and then suddenly they're responding to you as a person. Um, it's a wonderful feeling that you're actually making a difference to this young person's life. If you've got that feeling you want to do it, go for it. There's nothing better, nothing better than giving that something back. So. You've talked me into it. I sign up on the way out. <laughs> and we fixed. Will you? <laughs> Please do, there's so many children come through the system now and so many families that obviously need this, this help that, oh God, you'd just be doing a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And the families that you would be involved with would be so grateful, definitely.